Well, it's hard to say. Do you see the Acropolis first or do you go to the museum? Either way, it sort of depends on your scheduling and it is a lot to take in both artifacts, if you will, at the same day. However, uh, uh, we'll note that the entrance fee to this museum is not included in the uh, special ticket. I think it's a $35 ticket and six archaeological sites are included, the Acropolis being one of them, and this is not. Now, you're going to note that there's two queues here. There's two lines for people. One on the left, which is for, pre for prepaid, and the one on the right is for people just entering without a ticket. Now, after you enter the museum, it's really cool to take a look at these little dioramas, these little models of the Acropolis to give you an idea of the construction and the construction techniques and, the, and how they built them, basically. It gives you a nice sense because certainly when you go to the Acropolis, you're not going to see, you're going to basically see it's in ruins, and this is a, a, a very lovely recreation. So the museum can be overwhelming. Um, I don't think Rick Steves has a guided tour on this. I don't think a guided tour is really necessary. Um, I mean, ideally, if you're interested in archaeology, you'll have a little bit of background information, perhaps, or you just stop and you read the little descriptions of these items. There's a lot of artifacts in the museum, and it can feel kind of overwhelming. So you do have to be careful not to go through burnout. Now this little uh, display I thought was really fascinating. Uh, I mean, so this is what, 2,000, 2,500 years ago, and this is how they made their pigments, from stones. And they would find stones, they would ground them up into uh, powders, uh, and it's the same way that artists, uh, thousands of years later, would make their pigments from also. So apparently most of these artifacts would come from the Acropolis and the hills around the Acropolis. I mean, even after all of the plundering uh, that occurred at the site, it's rather interesting to see that they were able to recover uh, this much material. Now, a fascinating story about the museum is uh, that when they started to build it, they found uh, a rather interesting archaeological site directly underneath the museum and so the structure of the museum had to be built around the archaeological site. I think that archaeological site is something close to 500 BC to 700 AD. You're going to see that the archaeological site below the museum um, uh, cement and tiles which are introduced by the Romans. This tour is kind of set up not to get into a lot of depth and to be an archaeologist, which I'm not, but just to give you a feel of what the museum is going to be like and whether it's to your liking. So there you see a lot of only pieces uh, remaining, and so they've done a pretty good, nice, a nice job of trying to fill in the gaps, if you will. Now Athena, which was a very large, I think a 20-foot sculpture, in the Parthenon uh, is not part of the museum, I think, because it was made of gold and ivory, uh, great treasures that were probably pillaged um, um, thousands of years ago. Again, all of these little artifacts have nice little descriptions and they tell you where they came from, what part of the Parthenon they, they belong to. Let's see, a Rectheon. This is probably the highlight. So do note that the Erechtheon at the Acropolis, uh, these uh, six uh, sculptures are just, these are the actual ones. The ones that are at, and on site are recreations. Rather lovely little counter poses with the little legs sticking out. Instead of being stiff and rigid, they understood that uh, it made for a much more interesting, more natural, lifelike design. Uh, so this would be, this is on the third floor, 
and if you were at the Parthenon, um, this would be the frieze that runs around the entire perimeter of the structure, these little panels. And I would suspect that they tell a story the same, but this, this is like a frieze. Um, uh, most of those are plaster from originals. I think most of the originals are in uh, uh, England. So back in, I think in the 1800s, uh, the British archaeologists came and they removed a lot of this, a lot of the materials. I do think it's a great way to be, to have a little bit more history. So when you're at the Parthenon and the Acropolis, you have a little bit more history and you also have a better sense of perhaps how the structure the completed building actually looked. Although it's quite uh, a beautiful and brilliant piece of architecture, um, we, 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 we don't see it in its entirety. And this museum goes about to give us a more fuller, completed picture of what the Acropolis would have looked like in all its splendor and grandeur. So you can kind of tell the uh, by the by the type of stone that this is more natural then you're going to see little pieces of plaster and some some of these panels are are uh, complete plaster pieces I think these are all original uh, the ones there you see one on the left those are probably uh, copies from the British Museum Yeah, it's funny, the older I get, the less old this seems. Remember as a kid hearing about something being 2,000 years old, thinking, boy, that's so ancient. Now I recognize that it was just uh, yesterday. I mean, really, man's recorded history isn't that long. We have not been on this planet that long. And do remember, this is where our yeah. democracy comes from. Yeah, not for the fears. Um, if you are a senior, um, you may be able to get reduced admission. I think students with current ID do get uh, reduced commission at this museum. If you prepay for your ticket, I don't think.